Hi guys, this is Shankhu here and welcome to Smart Bengali. In this video, I'll show you how to set up your TP-Link router to your internet connection. For this demonstration, I'll be using TP-Link Archer A6 router, but this process is more or less same for any basic TP-Link routers. Now, if you're interested about this Archer A6 router, I have made an unboxing and hands-on review video about this router. I'll put the link in the description. Do check it. And also if you like science and technology related videos, I'd like to request you to please subscribe to my channel. You won't get disappointed. So without wasting any time, let's begin. So this is my TP-Link Archer A6 router version 3. In my unboxing video, I've discussed about this router in detail. So I'm skipping the discussion here. Okay, let's set it up and configure it to my internet connection. No worries, I'll show you everything. If you're an expert, you can skip this wire connection section. You may go to the firmware configuration directly or you may drop this video altogether. So this is the Ethernet patch cable and the other end of this cable is connected to my computer's LAN port. Now I'll connect this end to any of the available LAN ports. Basically this connection is for accessing the internet on your PC via LAN. Now this YOLO cable is my actual internet connection. The other end is connected to my ONU device. Now if you don't have a fiber connection setup then this would be the cable which directly came from your modem or your internet provider. In simple words, this is the cable which carries the internet connectivity. Now we need to connect this to your one port, the blue one. So this is the actual internet feed to the router and the internet will come to this WAN port and it will be distributed over this Wi-Fi antennas and the LAN ports. Okay, the cable setup is done. Now we just need to provide the power. Just take the power adapter and put the round pin plug to your power port. And connect the plug to your power socket. I'm turning it on. So I gave the power and the router is booting up. So let me boot it up. I just fast forwarded a video, the router took almost 1 minute and 15 seconds to boot, which is little longer than usual. And this red LED is on cause we didn't set up the internet connectivity yet. Alright, let's jump to the PC and show you how to configure this router. Open any browser, I'm using Vivaldi here. Now go to tplinkwifi.net. This is the setup page. Alternatively, you can go to this IP address 192.168.0.1. This is the default IP address to access the firmware. And this IP might be different for different routers, but generally it's either 192.168.0.1 or 192.168.1.1. You'll find this IP on the back sticker of your router. So do check it before starting this process. So here we need to create an admin password. By the way, this is not your Wi-Fi password. This password will be required to access the router settings later. You can see it is giving me warnings. I need to set up a little more complicated password. In earlier Gen TP-Link routers, this default password was admin. But for this modern routers, they are giving an option to set up the admin password right away. Let me set a password. I need to follow this criteria. Okay, let's get started. This is the quick setup page. We need to set up the time zone here. I need UTC plus 5.5 hours where it is. Okay, here. After setting the time zone, click on next. Here you need to set up your connection type. Static IP, dynamic IP, point-to-point -point protocol. All the options are available here. Even ISP profiles. But here in Kolkata, most internet providers use static IP because they provide internet via local subnet system. So I'm going to choose the static IP here for my connection type. And don't worry if you're using PPPoE connection. I have already made a video about that. You can check that video in my channel. I made this video a few months back. By the way, they have also provided an auto detection button. But from my experiences, I can tell you it doesn't work perfectly all the time. Let's check. So it has detected my connection type is PPPoE, which is not correct. Anyway, I'll choose the static IP and move forward. 
here you need to put your own IP addresses. In case you don't know what your IP address is, you can ask it to your local operator or your internet service provider. They will provide you these details. So let me put my IP address here. By default, the option is IPv4, but this router also supports IPv6. But a very limited number of ISPs are using IPv6 as of now. So now I'll put my subnet mask. Normally it's 255.255.255.0 for this set of IP addresses. Actually there are some rules regarding subnet mask calculation, but I don't want to discuss it here. Now put your default gateway. Again if you don't know these numbers, contact your ISP, they will give you the details. Now for DNS, I'm going to be using Cloudflare DNS. So the primary DNS is 1.1.1.1. And the secondary DNS is 1.0.0.1. Check which DNS is faster for your location and then use it. Click on next. Here we have an option to enable or disable the smart connect. As they have written here, smart connect allows your mobile device to automatically switch connection to the Wi-Fi band that provides the first at speed. It means your mobile device will automatically select 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz band based on your location with respect to the router. This is the Wi-Fi name. You can change it here and they have provided a default password. You can also change the password from here. Let me change it. By the way, this checkbox is to turn on or off the Wi-Fi signal. Keep it on. Otherwise, your mobile devices won't detect your Wi-Fi signal. When you're done, click Next. They have given a summary page here. You can see there is no information regarding the 5 GHz or 2.4 GHz band. This is because I have selected the Smart Connect option. That's why those two bands are currently working as a single entity. And I mean theoretically. Of course the physical implementation is still distinct. But don't worry, I'll show you how to use those bands separately. Just watch the video till the end. Okay, now let me click on save. You can see the network setup is successfully done. Now I can use the internet. If you don't have any TP-Link ID, they are providing an option to create one. This router particularly doesn't support any cloud functions except the login, but there are some routers which can be fully controlled via cloud. And this TP-Link ID is required for that. There is no harm creating one. So click on register now. Here you need to give your email and set up a password. Let me quickly fill this up. You may read the terms and conditions from here. I mean, it's a good practice, but you and I both know it is not possible to read all of this. Nobody has time for that. So let's check it. But if you have time, you should read it. So click on register. So they have sent a verification mail. Let me quickly verify it. All right, I have successfully verified. Let me click on login with my newly created credentials. So the setup process is complete. Finally, this is a firmware config page. Let's check if the internet is working. Okay, my channel page has been reloaded automatically. It means we have established the connection, but still just to show you, I'm gonna open the google.com, the famous page to check if you have internet connectivity or not. As you can see, the internet is working fine. So this video is almost over. Before ending this video, as I promised earlier, let me show you how to set up 5 GHz and 2.4 GHz band separately. Open your browser. Now go to 192.168.0.1 to access the firmware. So this is the firmware page. Click on advanced. Now go to the wireless settings under wireless. So this is the page we are interested in. No band information is showing cause the smart connect option is still enabled. Just disable it. You can see now you can access 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz band separately. And you can configure each band with their own settings. For now, I'm going to just change the Wi-Fi name for the 5 GHz band. That's it. If you want, you can change the password of the 5 GHz band, but I'm fine with my current password.
oh there is no save button over here Okay, the save button is here on the 2.4 GHz page. This button should work for both of them. Let's click. Okay, this is not saving. No, it's not working. Probably it's a bug in the firmware. Let's check if this works in the basic mode. Click on basic. Go to the wireless here. Let me change the Wi Fi name for the 5 GHz band. Let's try one more time. Okay, it's saving here. Since this is the only firmware built for this hardware, probably there are some bugs. That's why it wasn't saving in the advanced mode. Hopefully they'll fix it in the future update. Alright guys, this video is already a little longer than I expected. But as you've seen, this amount of time was required for this video. Still if you find this video slow, please let me know in the comment section. I'll try to improve my timings in the future. By the way, this is just the initial setup. If you want a full walkthrough of this Archer A6 router firmware, and if you want me to explain all of these features, let me know in the comment section. Also I made some other videos on this router. Check the playlist given in the description. And guys, if you like this video, please hit the like button. And once again, I'll request you to please subscribe to my channel to get more videos like this. See you in my next video. Thank you.